state of health on February, uh, March 6, 2024. Uh, a roll call or uh, is Jean Connaughton mm -hmm. and Julian Morgan. Morgan and Amy Vigan present. Uh, Larry uh, and uh, Patrick are not here yet. We'll uh, let everybody know when they arrive and you'll see them hopefully. Um, I'm going to jump over the variants right now, and we're going to go to the health agent's report, if there's anything, and see if these guys come. Absolutely. Um, so disease reports, we'll touch on that in another part of the agenda. Um, Title V reviews and variances have done four conventional uh, Title V reviews, one alternative. Um, we had five new perk uh, tests done. Um, the, you know the Overjordan section where they, they started to do some of that redevelopment? They were looking to redo all the lots that they've divided up out there. So um, we did quite a few perk tests the other day out there. So those might be coming in soon. We'll see. They weren't very favorable perk tests, but nevertheless, Is that because of the, sure. the, the, the groundwater ground is, is really bad. There. About a foot down because it's all marsh over there and, and uh, wetland. So they'll be contending with that. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, inspections are ongoing. Sam's out there taking care of those inspections. Um, we have the part-time inspector who's, uh, who's been assisting from the, the grant that we're part of with the grant group. Um, so they're out there knocking those out. Beach water sampling is going to begin in June. Um, I've been in touch with the DPH internship program. Um, we've gone back and forth with a few emails. So um, our co-op co project for them uh, made the cut. So it's in the portal. If anyone's interested, in it, they'll, um, they'll let us know. We're fingers crossed. Hopefully somebody's interested. Uh, we don't have any pending court cases right now. Uh, the public health nurse, um, she's still chugging along, taking care of our maven, doing all of our disease reporting. Um, it seems to be the same mix that, that we've normally been seeing with the COVID and the flus and um, just the general time of year stuff. We'll be looking, probably seeing some of the tick stuff in the next two months or so. Uh, that'll be coming up shortly. And you may have a social worker. Yep, we're, we'll have interviews for um, additional <laughs> positions that we'll be hiring through the um, Public Health Excellence League grant group, which is where our part-time food inspector that works with Sam is from. Um, so that'll be exciting. And how do you see using using the social worker the most? Of the I have for everyone. a long list of ideas. I, I think the biggest thing, um, the social worker for us, is the kind of the housing side with the initiative to try to help people um, connect with services and, and some of the stuff that we don't interact with on a normal basis at the, in our office at least. Um, and then a little outreach with some of the homeless population and, and the underservice group that we have um, roaming around town quite often. Um, it'll be nice to be able to connect them hopefully with, with more services and, and have and somebody a little more. Also. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's usually a combination of things with that group. So. It'll be nice to have a social worker that can kind of touch all the, all those areas. I know uh, from what I've heard, she's working for, or he, for five towns. Yes. Is that yep. correct? Yep. So there, wh whoever we choose will be a full-time employees, but that their time is split between all five towns, depending. Not every town is, is interested in um, the services from that person, so they might opt out. So that mm -hmm. just leaves more time for us to divide up. Um, be really great, I don't, depending on what their hours are, if they join us on one of the meetings. Absolutely. Once or twice a year type thing. Yeah, um, we can do that. Uh, maybe twice a year would be once they're on board, so we uh, get to meet them and whether they're online or versus come here. Yeah, so very, very possible, very possible. Um, and an epidemiologist. And an epidemiologist as well, yep. Yeah, we have regular stuff that we do epidemiology-wise. Um, that we usually just deal with the Department of Public Health with, but I'm sure having access to the epidemiologist, we can we can dig into some more data and, and do some, they're really good at doing disease and, and kind of that, um, just tracking patterns and stuff like that as far as public health goes, they're a little more in tune with that. So um, if we can get them data through Toby and some of the other stuff that we have access to, hopefully we can work on some projects with them as well. So right now what you're saying, what you work with is like the COVID and the Lyme yep. and all the reportable diseases. Correct, yep. Okay. yep. It's just so that everybody... Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah there's a, well, there's quite a few things we can do with the epidemiologist, even the food stuff. Um, all of our foodborne illnesses, they're, they're very good at doing all the tracking and 
whittling down to, you know, origin source and all that stuff. Salmonella. Um, exactly, yep. Um, so it'll be nice to have them on board for those as well. Um, the Emergency Preparedness Coalition, we're still attending the meetings. Um, we're meeting all of our goals as far as the state's requirements for that. Um, we're still working on the plans that we never get to use, but we'll continue to be team players and work on that. Um, rental housing, we're, we're still we're still chugging away at it. Um, Robin's finally comfortable enough in the office. We've now tossed her into the rental program as well, so she's been working on that um, and just getting all the registrations. And it's it still seems to be like I don't know another word to call it, but it's almost like the COVID hangover. People weren't renting and they weren't they weren't registering because they weren't renting. So there there was that lull. So it's kind of just getting everybody back in the routine and, and um, making phone calls and emails and all that jazz to get them get them back in the program and get everybody back uh, inspected. So we're working away on that too. And I don't think I have anything else. Good. Uh new uh, under your report you do have new business oh that for you we talked about this briefly mm -hmm. last time mm -hmm. um we have this fully implemented now we have the ability we have the tickets so um we will be out ticketing shortly um we're just working through the initial process there's a little more detail involved than initially thought um so we're just working through a small hiccup with that We'll be off and running. Great. Um, and infectious disease, which I usually do this, not a whole lot new. We still are seeing cases of flu and COVID. There is a new COVID vac. Well, there's a new recommendation from the CDC for anyone over 65 to get a second COVID. If it's the Moderna, it's a spike vaccine. Um, started in October, but anyone, if it's been more than two to three months, you can get a second vaccine. Um, and there's a joint now, so you can't get it everywhere yet, but a joint through COVID, which will be lovely. Um, but the, the data on the, on the vaccine, the spike vaccine, COVID, um, for those at increased risk, is quite clear that it makes a difference if you've had it and that you, you're less likely to go into the hospital and all. So on a, on a, um, uh, from the health, public health perspective, it certainly makes sense to get it. Um, especially if you have all, uh, you know, if you're, you're, you get, ex you are exposed a lot and you're sick or you, you might be around grandparents or small children and that sort of thing. So, um, and it is, um, I was going to go back now to, um, the beginning and start at, uh, continue discussion and possible vote regarding two Seahorse Lane variants. I would like, we have... Uh, Dave's not here. Oh, he's not. So we could uh, skip over then. We can, we can, we can, we can go through it. He's reduced okay. a majority of the we variances. Would, before we're going to do a vote, yeah. I would uh, entertain a motion to move mm -hmm. up um, uh, one of our associate members to voting member for this. Uh, oh, I can't hear you. You're silenced. It actually has to be both of them because I need to recuse myself on this uh, two seahorse. If you recall, they're my clients, so okay. Both um, of them need, would need to move so up. I so I will make a motion and vote to move up both Mary <laughs> and um, Jean. Jean to voting members. Um, um, she is recusing herself for this one um, vote. Um, and do you want to? Sure. So following our meeting, um, I had a, a few different discussions with Dave. We went back and forth uh, because there were some things in the technical manual for the sand filter that um, didn't really meet the specifications that he had on the plan. So we, we worked through those as well as the DEP approval for this specific sand filter setup that he's using. He's also off as far as groundwater separation requirement for that in the height of the uh, the wall above grade so there are restrictions in all so basically there's a technical manual for the filter and that comes from the Rhode Island state that put this together and then there's the DP approval letter approving basically what they're going to allow when you do this install um, 
as you can imagine, in true fashion, they don't mesh. They're not exactly the same, so some requirements in one are not the same as the other. So we worked backwards through this. Um, he was also working on an older approval letter for this particular system. So he had some of his numbers off and some of his setbacks off. So we've adjusted for all of that. Um, and actually in doing so, it eliminated a majority of the variances that he was requesting. Um, the only two that were left uh, were the variance for the perk test, which is just basically for all the sand filters. They, they do a sieve analysis and, and that's a requirement from the technical manual. Um, and then they're requesting to design for two bedrooms instead of three and they've provided a deed restriction, which I have a copy of here. Um, but basically from his previous design, the technical manual has a, a minimum setback of, or a minimum offset of three feet from groundwater. Um, that's required per their design manual. But the state's approval letter actually was um, revised and they still require a four foot separation minimum, which is odd as you know, because it, the advantage of the sand filter was to reduce down to three feet. Um, so him and I went back and forth on that and we, we both came to the same assumption that um, somewhere along the way in the revision, they changed the setback to four feet, which unfortunately we're stuck with. So, luckily enough, he was able to readjust the plan because there's also a maximum height above ground that you can have the wall, the retaining wall for the sand filter. So he just barely squeaked by with all the uh, all the setbacks and getting the groundwater separation. Um, so everything fits. It's within spec as far as the manual is concerned in the uh, DP approval letter, and he needs. Just the two simple variances. That was a long one. We went back and forth. Yes. Do you have any comments? And this still, this will still need to go before the other boards. Um, Dave mentioned at the last meeting that you'd like to have us approve this particular setup before they uh, move forward with going to zoning and doing all the appeal okay. process for that. So um, this still has to go before other boards, and there there may be additional changes. Environmental too, correct? Right. And then um, the board had requested the addition of the surrounding systems, um, and so I was able to get Dave a copy of that if you would like to see the full size plan. Added number four, and then um, at the top of the page, right above the property layout, he added the uh, new system design that's going into number four. To actually, right above the property, the, the property for number four actually wraps around this. So, the system for number four is going to be um, at the top of your page, that checkered box that's up there. That's actually the system for number four um, at the very tippy top there, the north east side. Um, and then he's also added in those water lines that the board is requesting, and there was no additional um, wells located within 150 feet. There, there's a neighbor across the street with a well, but it's well outside um, what we would need for this particular setup. Same side of the street, but on the other side of the driveway? Correct, yep. And he did locate the water main and that water service for number four. Very small lot. Yep. It is. It's very small. So he did. This is a maximum twenty four. This is a two foot wall max above per the Rhode Island manual, and he was already basically he squeezed every inch he could out of that to get his four feet minimum. The new DEP letter for some reason is, is in, in Rhode Island, Island, not Mass. The, well, yeah, so the design manual from Rhode Island is 24 inches for the wall above grade. This is, this is that. And then this the Mass approval is a minimum of four so. foot separation from Rhode Island. Not three. three. This, this is a number. manual is three, which is the whole thing. Okay. Right okay. next to it. Okay. It's not even the same. They're very close mm -hmm. to each other. Um, and that so includes this, the reduction of the treatment. And this is the water. Correct. Usually you get a two foot yeah. reduction for treatment. The DEP approval so it's a very, it's a very with two minutes bridge. Uh, sand is five feet. Hmm. So 
We took the one foot to go to four. Oh, okay. Which is, I don't understand it. It kind of made the same foot, but not as appealing as it used to be. If you still need the five foot separation. Yeah, I don't know. That's it? A lot less than that. Yeah. We were talking about the, the advantage of the same filter used to be that you could go down to three feet with the groundwater, but um, in that revised DEP approval letter, um, they changed a lot of the uh, groundwater separations based on the type of soils that you had. So it, if you're in sandy soils like we have that are less than two minutes per inch on the perk rate, um, they still require a, a pretty decent sized um, groundwater setback, which is kind of a, takes away the advantage of the sand filter. But he was still able to um, to take a reduction as far as the sand filter goes and uh, and make it fit. So with with minimal variances. But this doesn't trump the impervious barrier requirements of Title V. No, because I think. Under Title V, you have to have a 40 mil barrier, and you have to have a PE design, inspect, and supervise construction of the retaining wall. Yep, and yeah, so Dave's the PE on it, and he has the cert from the Rhode Island company that does the technical manual and the design for it. Um, I just it says 30 mil liner. I think that should be 40. On the inside of the retaining oh, I see wall. That now. Okay, yep. Yeah. And then I, I have a form if you need it, but the engineer has to take responsibility. He's going to be out there to supervise the construction, the construction of the wall. Because yep. I've had these pressure-treated timber walls collapse before because you can't have any weep holes. You've got all that hydraulic pressure pushing out. Yep. And uh, none of the engineers I know like to use wooden pressure-treated timbers with just spikes to hold them in place. Yeah. Well, you, the so... From a bird's eye view, this is a retaining wall mm -hmm. that's going to totally surround the leaching system. And then there's a profile over here that shows the timbers stacked up. But with, with a lot of retaining walls, you have weep holes in them to relieve the hydraulic pressure. But with a septic system, you can't have weep holes. You don't want the wastewater coming out. So you've got all that extra hydraulic pressure pushing out. So most of the time, you want to do reinforced concrete walls or engineered concrete walls. So in this okay. case, they're specking out a timber wall with landscape timbers with, with 10 inch spikes. So it's important that a professional engineer is going to be on site. He's got to he's got to give them the details how to build it. He's got to be there to supervise construction, and then he's got to certify it in writing. So that engineer owns the liability for that yeah, wall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah that's a form that he'll provide. Yeah. He's supposed to provide us for being certifying the wall yeah. and the install. And then that barrier is called out 30 mil bar 30 mil milliliters is the, 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 the thickness of the barrier um, that you have to have inside the timber wall because the timber is not, it's just timber sitting on top of each other, so there are spaces in it. You have to have another rubber membrane barrier between that to keep the effluent from yeah. Yeah. And it has to be, I believe the state specification is 40 mil, and he's calling out 30 mil. So it might just be a matter of... I think the design manual is 30, but... The, the, the in Rhode is, Island, it's yes, 30. Yeah, in think, Mass, it's 40. Oh, this yeah, is probably the, uh, another one yeah. of the changes, yeah. This is probably the cutaway from the manual from, yeah. with the 30 mil mark. That's the problem um, with Mass to Rhode Island. So... Is these little differences. Yeah. So we get, well, I'll have him double-check that. Or I'll double check the manual and, and we'll have them make the adjustment. But other than that. So I would, unless you have any other comments, would entertain a motion with some of the changes on here to. <coughs> oh, and he's provided us the PLS stamp as well on the front page, the surveyor stamp. Yes. Matthew Leone. Mm -hmm. So this isn't new construction though, right? No. There is an existing house here. That they're redoing it regardless, is my understanding, the septic system, but they still have to go before zoning and I think conservation um, for the plans to raise the 
the structure it's going to end up, I believe it's 18 feet in this. So 18, 20. So I think the only variance they need then is for the sieve analysis in lieu of a perk test. And he's going to design for two, so he added the additional one to go down to two. Well, if it's not new construction, you can design for two as long as there's a two-bedroom deed restriction. The three-bedroom minimum is only for new construction if Correct, you can yeah. fully site a three-bedroom system with a reserve area. So since this isn't new construction, I don't think he needs the second one. And he, he, and he added the note. The deed restriction was already recorded and provided. Okay. I think he was just covering his bases and doing it. It was already recorded? That's what oh. it's, it's, or okay. to be recorded. It says to be recorded. To be recorded yeah. Okay. As long as that deed restriction includes an operation and maintenance contract for the singular tank yep. and the inspections that are required for the life of the system. Um, the, 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 uh, the bottomless sand filter requires those two. Under pressure distribution, there's an uh, annual inspection required for pressure distribution, which can be added into the O&M contract for the treatment tank. So is that something that w needs to be added, or is that, uh, is that already well, clear? Well, I found that if it's not in the deed restriction specifically, it gets overlooked. A lot of uh, times, uh, all these things should be, you know, the, the approval letter for the treatment tank, the approval letter for the pressure distribution, it should all be referenced in the deed restriction. So whoever's doing the deed restriction, sometimes it's lawyers and they don't always know all the ins and outs of pressure distribution and treatment tanks. And Probably most of the time they don't. Yeah. So then it gets transferred and then somebody else, it falls into noncompliance because nobody knows that there's, have to all do these that. contracts okay. in place. Yeah. That's fair. Um, a lot, most systems have gravity distribution boxes, so it's all just flowing out. But when you have a pump that's pushing it out into these laterals, those have to be inspected every year. And that's why a lot of health agents don't like pressure distribution, because there's this maintenance that needs to be done. The laterals need to be cleaned, and, and it doesn't get done, and then they end up prematurely failing after three well, years. Yeah, they unhook the alarm, or they unhook the light, or... Yeah, usually they're more for the larger systems, but this is an individual one, and it would still need the annual inspections for the pressure distribution, and then probably uh, quarterly or biannual for, yeah. for the singular tank. So this is just this is a lot with these that yeah. you have to add it all into the, the deed reference. We can remind the property representative to add that to the deed restriction, I think. I think she's present. <laughs> um, I have some sample letters if anybody needs them well, would you like to, make to reference all this. Um, I would make, make a motion. motion. We approve <laughs> the revised plans, and really the only variance needed is for a civ analysis um, with the stipulation that uh, a 40 mil membrane is used instead of a 30 mil that the professional engineer is going to supervise construction and certify the retaining wall uh, in writing prior to the issuance of the compliance, which also needs a deed reference prior to the issuance of the compliance that mentions the O&M contract for the life of the treatment tank and the annual inspections for the pressure distribution leaching uh, system. I forget anything. And do I have a second? Yeah. Second. Gene Kanaki. And uh, roll call vote. Uh, Larry? Aye. Lawrence Perry? Yes. And Gene Kanaki. Gene Kanaki. Aye or no? Which? You have to say yes or no? Yes. <laughs> and Amy Vigant, yes. Do you see these afterwards when they come in, when, when it's done with the paperwork? Once yes. the, yeah, you yeah, have to review that all the things. We do all the final sign Because it does yeah. sometimes get a little, a few things that have to be done. Okay. Yeah, I make um, myself checklists for a lot of these because there's so much stuff. It is a lot, and it's easy to overlook one of them and when they come back and not see it. So. Um, now is a uh, discussion and possible vote regarding 54 Shady Lane variance requests. Do you, you have, have someone do, present? Okay, sir. You have to do another vote just for one member. 
Yes. Um, I have some full size so plans. Excuse me one second. We have to vote to oh, okay. bring uh, <clears throat> Jillian back in. Um, or nope. It would so she so only recused herself for the one. So we just have to one member up to do the vote for this one. Because so this will be another separate. So we and then can we keep that vote for the rest of the? If you so choose. If absolutely. we. Okay. Um, I would recommend that we have Larry uh, Lawrence Perry um, voting for the rest of the, uh, bringing him up as the uh, voting member um, for uh, the rest of the meeting. And do Second. I um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, I, Jillian Morton, yes. And Amy Vigant, yes. I yes. And yes, I don't know if you can vote yourself. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm already voted up, so do I get to vote for myself? Um, thank you. Sorry. Uh, problem. I'm sorry, Angela. Yes. Um, yes. I was here on behalf of the owners, this is Joe and Sharon Lacido, and sticking point in the discussion was that we were looking for a reduction from the distance to the well to, to the SAS. That's been eliminated. We're not requesting that. They're putting in a brand new well. And it is, so we now have, uh, we're asking for three variances, uh, uh, 405A, a reduction of two feet um, from the 10-foot sideline. I went over all this with the conservation agent and with with um, Patrick, and he told me what the minimums were, and I was able to best them. Uh, we've been to conservation and had approval. The only uh, point that was uh, seemed to be a problem was the reduction to the uh, well, if you need some copies of the plan, I have some here. Do you like one? This young lady here, I think. Can well, you get my hands? That's pretty okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. Well, that's the above as well. And this is one here. Hey. I know. <laughs> there you go. The, so we now are, are requesting the two foot reduction to the, from the property line. We are asking for a 95 foot reduction to the BBW and the although singular supposed to get a reduction of one foot. I've asked to confirm that with the board. So now that the new well is located 145 feet from the um, reaching area and um, it's about 150 from the well that looks like it's on this lot but um, it was for the property next door. So I was able to, I'm 103 feet from the leach area um, to the well of the op on the uh, abutting property. So I, the only variances that I uh, requested were the ones that was distance to the BBW, the groundwater elevation and the uh, two foot to the property line. This one highlights where the new well is located. Oh, this is that. Thank you. <laughs> it gets kind of crowded on the planet. Way. So this is that dirt road that goes in there. This is yes, from Swiss Beach. 
Yeah. Into the woods by the yes. conservation yes. land, right? Yes. My clients wanted to be off the grid, and I guarantee you they're off the oh, grid. Yeah. <laughs> they have solar, right there, solar panels, all that jazz. <clears throat> Is this the last house looking from the beach into the land over? Like there's a couple houses, like there's a Swiss beach and then there's like two houses in the woods. So you're the very last one in? Second, yes, second to last. Second to last. Mm -hmm. one yeah, this one is very far in. The yeah. one that is up on cement blocks. It's, mm -hmm. they, they can't get the separation, so it's just sitting there. And the, my clients are interested in buying it from the two brothers that inherited it. So the well from on the the neighbor's well that's being used. It's a hundred and three feet. Right, and that's that people live there and they use um, it. It's they use it as a mailing address, but they're only there during the summer. It's the summer. My yeah. observations. But you still want clean water in the summer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I was able to meet all the regs except the, the variances that I've requested. And the well separation has been uh, dropped. They're putting it in the well if you approve it. And this is going to be one bedroom, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, it says total capacity 240, so that's a two-bedroom capacity. So you're designing for two bedrooms, aren't you? I mean, I think that's all right. It just has to have a deed restriction to two bedrooms, and that's the minimum, but... Yeah. Um, well, it, it looks like you're designing for two bedrooms, not one. Well, I, I designed that in case at some time in the future they uh, acquired the property next door and had a cottage there. They tie into this system because it'd all be in the same lot. I haven't heard of the Noweco Singular. Let's see. You don't see those as much, right? The Noweco Singular? Systems? That's what was on the last one. Yeah. So that's probably the second most common. Yeah. So that's the. Do you design for two because they might buy another property that you want to tie into this? No. There is a, the possibility that these gentlemen in, inherited the lot to the left face from yeah. looking from the water. And they might want to upgrade that. So that's the reason. But it would be deed restricted to two bedrooms. So you're using a, is there a detail for the chamber that you're using? You have like a, a stack? On, on this, is it a flow diffuser, or is it a different type of chamber? I'm, I'm no, the, 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 uh, the, uh, um, I'm looking, not spotting it. No, it's it's a one chamber with stone. It's the low profile H20, right? Yes. Probably should be a detail on here, just to show all that. Um, I don't know if that's a, a low profile chamber. Because it's two foot. happy to provide that. You got a two foot effective depth, so I don't think that's low profile. If you were doing a low profile one, it would only be a one foot effective. No, I, I didn't, I'm sorry, Patrick said that. Oh. I'm not using a, a low profile. I'm using one 500 gallon diffuser. 
with stones. But if you want detail on it, I'd be happy to provide it if you make it a provision of your approval. So it's it's sitting it's not it's just sitting on sand it's not sitting on stone. No, nope, it's sitting on sand. Um, Double washed stone. No, it's, it's, it's on. It is. It, it's sitting on sand. Okay. Just got stone around it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason it's a, it's a box within a box graphically on the site plan. And that's the scale. So you're putting in a new well. We're putting in a brand new well, if I may. And that's going to be a deep drilled well or a shallow well? There's, there's the well. Here? Right Right here? There, this, yeah, that line, like that, that? that it, exactly. And this is the old well? That's the one that was on the property line so close, I, we're putting in a brand new one. And it's going to be a deep drilled well, not a shallow well. Uh, I think they have a problem with the shallow well. <laughs> yeah, it's right on the marsh. So the only variances are to the property line. The leaching is going from 10 to 8 to the property line. Yes, like. sir. Um, 55, the, the, well, the BBW, it only has to be 50 from the BBW, right? So that's not really a variance. Unless this is a, right? The Title V setback is 50 feet to a BBW. Mm -hmm. So you're given 55, so we don't really need that variance, I don't think. Nope, and you're providing the D-Knight so it satisfies our regulations, and then you don't need the one foot either because you did that with the... Right. So really the only variances are the property lines. Correct. That, I put the others in so you could discuss it. <laughs> so it's really the property line and then the deep restriction if it's... <coughs> And then on the other, this property line that you're varying to with the leaching, is there anybody on that other lot or is that vacant? It's a very large lot. The, the house itself is probably 150 feet minimum. So there's no septic system on the other side of that it's, property it line? It should be. It's the other okay. Line. No, sir. It hasn't been upgraded, so it's probably similar to this one. There's a probably a cesspool sucked right up against the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only one that's been upgraded that we have any data for, it, if if you orient it northward, is the northern property right above it. Yeah. 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 We have 103 feet separation. I guess I would make a motion to uh, grant the property line variances from 10 feet to 8 feet for the on-site SAS to the property line and that's it really. And the deed restriction. There's no other variances. Right. No. And just the deed restriction. And the deed restriction to two bedrooms. Two bedrooms with the OM contract. Correct. Uh, remedial okay. use, O and M, for the life of the system, for the treatment tank. Yes, they've, they've already talked to, to Matt uh, Dalton from Singular and have making arrangements to buy it through uh, Matt. And do I have a second on that motion? Second. And roll call vote. Uh, it's okay. I'm just wondering, why do we need the variance to the property line? Well, it should be a minimum of 10 feet. And so you can't I, do two more feet? No, the problem is the um, triangulation. I took the distances from the abutting wells and septic systems, and I had a very small window 
Uh, when I talked with Patrick and the uh, health, uh, conservation agent, they were going to have it down lower, but I was eligible by measuring. I was able to fit and get to eight feet. I couldn't get the ten. I tried. So we're in the middle of a. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Because no, okay. no, you've got 103 you and you've got 145 and you got you got extra you be feet on all. To yeah. The west, because the only thing you're running into is that 100 foot from the well above, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Yeah, because if you go straight towards the house. Correct. I don't, I don't think you have a problem with meeting that 10 foot. I, I don't know that you need any variances on this. Unless these distances, are, I mean, this, is, there a, is there a land surveyor involved with this? I don't see yes, a stamp on here. There is a land surveyor, and that's the reason my uh, letter says that they, SAS would be staked by instrument. So the, the POS did a, a survey prior to your... Pardon? The surveyor did a survey prior to you doing this plan? Yes. Yeah. This plan was uh, done by um, Hood Surveying. <clears throat> and they were, they staked the property lines, et cetera, et cetera. So can they certify this after it goes in and, and stamp the as-built? Sure. And I think I, I, it looks to me like there's plenty of room that you could, you could move this. If you're going to have a land surveyor stake the property lines and, and you've got three feet there and five feet to play with there and 45 feet to play with in the other direction, I don't see why you can't adjust this. I can, I'll adjust it. It was the way it was laid out. Yeah. That was done when I had the restraint of the distance to the oh, existing okay. well. Gotcha. So um, now we, without that, you, you, you're free to... Changes it. Yeah, you could move that the extra two feet, and then you won't have to get any variances. Huh? I, I would say, and then... Just I mean, have I'd, a deed restriction. Yeah, you're going to have the, the uh, deed restriction for two bedrooms with the O&M contract for the treatment tank. Yes, sir. And as long as the land surveyor can stamp the as-built, yes. I don't see why... If you can have him stake that property line and, and the well radius. The stakes think, are already in for the property. Yeah, I, I would think that they could, as long as conservation is okay, because you're in their buffer zone. That's the only thing you have to get so, confirmed with you. Um, Did they approve this plan already? They have. Well, I guess we can give him the variance if he needs it, but I just don't yeah. see that it's needed. But if, yeah. if conservation prefers it to be 8 feet from the property line instead of 10, I would think that could be moved a parallel along the setback to the wetland without encroaching on that one either and, mm -hmm. and still make your 100 foot minimum to the well. Um, would you like to redo your <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> motion? Um, I, I, my recommendation uh, or thinking of it is we could certainly make a uh, motion that perhaps they could do it without changing and without getting any variances except for you know the deed restriction and unless conservation has an issue with it and then yeah, we would agree to uh, it's, it's this, this little arm <coughs> in the, the BBW if you, were, if you slide west they're going to be within the but we could then we could okay it uh, with a variance if it has to be um, and then they don't need to come back before us. Yeah, I mean, we can vary down. You, you, we don't even need to vary for the wetland. You can go down to 50 feet to a wetland mm -hmm. with a leaching system. So I don't know what conservation's rules are on their buffer zone, but the Title V setback is only 50 feet right. from a leaching system to a wetland. I respectfully request that you give me the two feet on the sideline if it's necessary because as you can see the uh, property lines and the wetlands get closer. I'll, I'll do yeah. what I can uh, on the layout and then when we do it I'll keep Patrick informed. That seems fair. So you, you could give him down to the two feet and then if he's able to adjust farther that's that's better because we can give him down to two feet. 
Right. Ian said this went through conservation already. Is there a um, order of conditions? That, I don't like have. What's, them. I don't have them with me. I'm not seeing anything recorded on the registry, so I'm. I'm just. I. I don't really like voting on something where it's going to be the two feet. Like I'd rather know which one is it. I Personally, like I mean, maybe that's me being a particular. Two, two foot is the plan that was approved by the Conservation Commission. So uh, okay. what I'm saying, if we vote on a variance with two feet and they can get less, it's just better because it's, 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 it's closer to the requirements. So, and I think we, we were okay with the two feet. So yeah, I'm fine um, with that. Um, so then, if they ha if by chance they need to, they can change it, and it's um, then there's not a problem. But obviously, um, they'd have to get an okay. It, you may have to get an okay to do that. I, if if I can change it to two, I'll review it with the conservation agent. Mm -hmm. Does that makes sense, yeah. Jillian. When you're changing that, then it may be a, a minor. But actually. It, it, I don't know if it's going towards the wetland or away from the wetland. So, but I guess we we can't really worry about conservation too. I just want to make sure whatever our vote is, it's on the, the the plan in front of us. So, if this is the plan and he wants the the two, that's fine by me. Please. And perhaps we can be sure that the conservation hears of this. Perhaps and that they get a copy. Correct. They, yes, they, so if he adjusts from this plan, he'll have to yes. get approval from. Right. Conservation because okay. this is what they they've approved this to form a function as far as we know. So what was the actual perk rate? Did they run a perk? I don't see the uh, or was this a sieve analysis? No, we ran the for it's less than five minutes. I mean as fast as we poured the water it just disappeared. So it's less than two minutes then? Yeah. Yeah, but I put less than five just in case. Well you get a foot the groundwater if it's greater than two and less than five. Yes. But you have to be five feet if it's less than two. So yes. so that must be why you asked for the one foot reduction of groundwater. Because it was less than yes. two, not less than five. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we do need to vote that groundwater variance then. Because it was uh the perk rate was fast and it requires a five foot separation and they're doing a four. So all right, I'll redo this. <laughs> I make a motion. We grant the variance from the property line from to the SAS from 10 feet to 8 feet, and the bottom of the system to groundwater from 5 feet to 4 feet, with a two-bedroom deed restriction and a deed reference for a lifetime O&M contract for the treatment tank. And do I have a second? Second. And roll call vote, Jillian Morton. Jillian Morton, yes. Uh, Lawrence Perry. Lawrence Perry, yes. And Amy Vigant, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Um, thank you. I'll come back over one day. It, it is yes. a beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. property. They look straight out over the wings neck. Thank you. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Have a good night. Was That's misleading with that less than five. No, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. And the, yeah. the there's certainly differences in how we can see how much people give, the engineers give or don't give. Um, next is discussion possible vote three East Edgewood Drive variance request. And it looks uh, good like evening. You. Good evening. How are you, Brad? Thank you. How are you doing? I'm going to uh, share my screen if you don't mind. I love it. <laughs> Wish everybody, I, I actually would be great if everybody would. Um, Jillian, you can see the screen. Can you see the screen, Jillian? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's the nice thing about the screen, um, just to thank you very much, Brad, is that we all then understand even better, I think. All right. So I'll just briefly run through the uh, project here. Uh, the house at 3 East Edgewater Drive has a failed septic system. The uh, house is situated roughly in the center of the lot. It's currently serviced by a 1,500 gallon tank and two 500 gallon leaching chambers. These were installed in uh, 2000. And at that time, it replaced uh, a 
I believe a thousand gallon tank in a leaching pit that was kind of roughly in this area here. Um, this site is situated uh, next to Crooked River and has a number of resource areas on the property. Uh, we have salt marsh at the bottom of the bank and due to the grade of the property in relationship to the flood elevation, which is shown on this, this purple line that kind of wraps around the site here. That's considered a top of coastal bank, meeting DEP's policy based on the, the slope of the property being greater than 10 to one. And uh, I believe, yeah, for the most part, yeah. So it's not greater than four to one, but it's greater than 10 to one. So it follows the flood elevation, elevation 16. So what we're doing, uh, what we're proposing is to uh, abandon uh, the existing components. We'll pump and fill, pump, crush and fill the tank, uh, pump and fill uh, the leaching facility, and we'll tie into a line that comes out of the house in this location here and wrap it around the existing deck and install a 1,500-gallon tank with a microfast insert, and that's because this whole property is within 150 feet of the salt marsh. And uh, after the, the septic tank, we'll install three 500 gallon leaching chambers in this configuration right here. Uh, we're, we were able to fit this on the property. It'd be front property line setback, side property line setback, uh, setback off the, the slab of, of the structure. <laughs> This system right here will be below the slab of this uh, called basement. It's a, it's a raised ranch, so the slab of this is walk out right here and walk out right here. Grade's only about two feet higher on either side and kind of across the front. Very, very shallow uh, raised ranch structure. The, the variances that we're requesting uh, pertain to the coastal bank. Tile 5 requires septic tanks to be at least 25 feet and leaching facilities or soil absorption systems to be at least 50 feet. Uh, as you can see, the tank is situated right or is bisected by the top of the coastal bank and the current grading here uh, puts the top, top of the coastal bank about a foot and a half from the proposed leaching facility. Uh, this grades here may are, are going to be lowered by roughly a foot so eventually once finished grading is done uh, the grades here might exceed 10 to 1 and uh, the, the top of coastal bank may actually move move away from the house away from the structure uh, where it where it starts to become steeper than and then uh, 10 to 1. So those are the two variances that we're requesting uh, on this project. Uh, we looked at this side of the property as opposed to removing this. Uh, this side has overhead utilities, a gas line, and is slightly closer to the, the salt marsh than on the opposite side. It's about nine feet further away uh, to be constructed on this side. This side also has a number of raised garden beds and, and, and shrubs and plantings on the side we're trying to uh, not disturb. So I think that we have uh, far superior design uh, on this side, even though it is adjacent to the coastal bank. It is, it is further, than, uh, further than salt marsh by nine feet and also provides uh, denitrification with the septic system. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any have any questions. Thank you, Brad. Any comments, Patrick? No, it's a it's a very tight space. Um, <coughs> the plan doesn't do justice to the actual constraints. I, after being out there, it's it's definitely a tricky walk. Um, there really isn't much else to do with it, to, as far as I can tell, other than a sand filter. But I don't even know that that would be. Advantageous here. Is this vacant to the west? Uh, nope. So I see there's a dwelling on this side, but nothing shown here. It's a little farther off that, that west of the lot's a little bit bigger. 
I just I showed that the side setback to the other structure because it was really really close to the uh, 20 feet. So the original approval had uh, a five foot variance on the side property line on the uh, east side. And it happened to be, you know, I, I believe it's based on the swing ties on the as built plan, puts it in this location. And uh, assuming that it was built according to the original plans, about 20 feet off this foundation. So I think they might have split it about a foot away from a foot and a half away from the side property line to maintain a setback off of this. This, this structure was not shown on the original uh, design plan. But the other side is, the, there is a structure, but it's a considerably further away. The no leaching system right on the property line there, or, or no wells uh, no, that we know no, of? It's all, it's, all, it's all wooded in this area here. No, they're all wooded on that east, uh, western side. So where is the water service? Is that... Shown. Okay. It's right. Uh, it's the it's it kind of lines up with the left oh, side. Okay, there the it is, right along the driveway. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And everybody else is on town water, no wells. Yeah, no wells. Is this the wood? There's the wood. Yeah, that's it. That's the shut off. Yeah. And then there's a, a blue line comes in right yep. there. That's the water, okay. right along the driveway. If you want, I can show a picture of that left property line, just so you have an idea. No, I was just making sure there wasn't a cottage, right? Because you get that blower close to the property line, too. And yeah, we usually get complaints about those blowers if they're too close to somebody's house. Yeah, that neighborhood yeah, structure so is there's plenty, plenty of space. I would make a motion. We approve, as requested, uh, the 25-foot setback from the tank to the coastal bank and the 48 and a half foot uh, from the soil absorption system to the coastal bank along with a deed restriction with a reference to the o m contract for the fast and the restrictions to three bedrooms no increase in flow and do i have a second i'll second and a roll call vote julian what yes Lawrence Perry. Yes. And Andy Hugo. Yes. Thank you, Brad, for explaining. Good luck. I appreciate you both. Anytime. Thank you. Um, so tight, tight spaces to work in. All the salt marshes. It's, uh, Yes, it doesn't seem like it when you're there, but once you see the plane with the distance delineations, it, it gets a lot smaller once you start measuring. Oh, you know, small and that. wells and, and every, yeah, everything that's, uh, they're all quite tight. Um, we, prior to coming, Larry, we uh, did health agents report and infectious disease report. Um, we sort of started backwards to keep time flowing. Um, and, and, um, the next, then, any announcements for anyone? Nope. Right. Um, we can also, I know it's really early in the year, but things happen quickly. We can talk about, or thinking today in the office about potentially doing a summer party, Board of Health uh, members, staff, and um, we can think of a, a Wednesday in the summer, we'll do it at a specific beach property. <laughs> And families would be welcome. Um, so they're going to look at if there's um, great for kids and if there's a, a Wednesday afternoon, maybe three on, depending when people can come uh, with kids. If we do it way ahead, maybe more people can come and we can figure out whether we grill or whatever. So that's just my, it's an invitation really for me to everybody. Um, and we can figure out when we do it. So people can look at their calendars. July, we sometimes in the summer miss a meeting, and whether it's one of the Wednesdays, um, three on-ish, because it still makes it, people can swim in if they want. So just, um, that's my announcement. So everybody look at the calendars. Um, then we have next, um, 
approval of meeting minutes for February 21st. And if, has everyone gotten a chance to see them? Any comments on them? I had a comment, actually. Um, my comment was that the motion, no, that underneath a roll call, that the, where it starts with Mrs. Morton excused and Attorney Morton, or however you... Um, Rum has a revised copy. Yeah. Uh, 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 sh do you have a revised copy? Should that should be under... Th oh, I do also? Oh. Yes. Look at the minutes for February 21st. Should be in the back. I, th yes, this is what I... Ah. This one here. Another one. Yes, so is it done? Do I have two of them? Do you have else? It's adjusted for wording and form. It's I'm sorry, I, I may be missing something. What, what I'm seeing is under the roll call, yeah. Mrs. Morton excuses herself to avoid conflict of interest. That doesn't specifically say under three. It, uh, it has the address though, right? It says only for two. Only for two. Sorry. Oh, so that's oh, okay. Yeah, that's Go for variance. Oh, I, it is an end. Okay. The other way you could do it is just put it under number three, and then it's just for that number. I'm sorry, I didn't see that you'd added that because I'd read it before. Yep. That's how they want it. Okay, that's fine. Um, perfect. That was the only comment I had, and I corrected it. So sorry. I think it should go under that, Dr. Amy. I think it should stay under the, the subject line. Under the roll call? It's under the roll call. No, I think it's it, a call, one call it meeting. Stay under the specific, I think it should stay under the specific um, case. That case. On. If so, the only thing you do is you move that and start with number three. You start yeah. with that. And then the you only do. Re, you know, if someone wanted to go back into the minutes and try to fight a case or something, I just need clarity that that's the only one that I didn't sit on because obviously I voted. Well, they do. They, they yeah. changed it on this. So it now reads, Mrs. Morton excused herself to avoid conflict of interest with a discussion and possible vote for variance request for two uh -oh, she or slain. Okay. They added the the address in, so it is now clear. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So um, I would take a... Motion to approve the min minutes, um, Jillian Morton. And do I have a second? I second, Lawrence Perry. And roll call vote, Jillian Morton. Yes. Lawrence Perry. Yes. And Amy Vigant, yes. Thank you guys, sorry about that confusion. I didn't complete the reading, thought it was the same. Um, and then, do you have anything else today? I think that's, any other comments, questions? Uh, Seeing a vote to adjourn? A motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Julian Morton? Yes. Lawrence Perry, yes. And Amy Vigan, yes. And thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you.